Hello and welcome to A Day With The Car Driver. I'm Scam. And I'm Day. And this is the spring 2014 season. And we're going to spring off the floorboards and hit the biggest spike of our careers. Or something like that. Something like that. Hi Q. Hi Q. Hi Q. Uh, this is, of all the anime this decade, probably the one that we both equally have a lot of excitement about. Hmm. There's probably something. I wonder what is our favorite, like, combine, recombine our love of the show. Ooh, that's a tough one. I don't know. Made in Abyss, maybe? Land of the Lustrous? Maybe. There was a period around. There was a, <laughs> what about Eerie Fair Storm? I think you liked that one a lot more than me, I'll, but I also know you I liked it. You liked it a lot, though. I did. I think I like Made in Abyss a lot more than you, so maybe Land of the Lustrous is the perfect. Hmm. Yeah, because yeah. Land of the Lustrous was my favorite that season. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I liked Made in Abyss a lot. Yeah. But I liked Land of Lustrous Plus, a little more. We both also really, really like Haikyuu. God, us and like how many millions of other people? Haikyuu is... I mean, the groundwork was set by Kuroko's Basketball, but Haikyuu is the sports anime of the decade. Um, oh, easily. Like, if, if Fun you... fact, they were both made by the same uh, studio, though. Yes. But One it looks was... a lot nicer than the other. God, yeah. Haikyuu. Haikyuu looks incredible. Oh, it's a... This is an impeccably made piece of work. It's almost like production. I, I don't know if this is true, but it's almost like production IG saw the success that Kuroko's Basketball said had. And then I guess they just brought on some really talented people mm. and said, we will give you enough time and money to make something that we think, like something beautifully animated, basically. Mm. Because there's an attention to detail in the movement in Haikyuu. In case you've been living under a rock, Haikyuu is about high school kids playing volleyball. Yes. Uh, it's a sports anime through and through, you know, tournament arcs, people getting better as it goes on. Rivalry, getting the team back together. Rivalries, older senpais looking after the younger kohais who are secretly the more talented ones, etc. You know, hmm. it's a sports anime. Uh, but it's, it's definitely... a very good one. Yeah. Um, and I would also say, because it's not like it does anything mm-hmm. story-wise that's particularly novel. Yeah. It's just that it executes everything extremely well. I think the lack of novelty is kind of why it took me... Because you like this more than me, Haikyuu. Mm. Uh, it took me a while to get into it. I found the first couple... First, maybe like the first like almost 13 episodes like fine. But I was pretty indifferent to a bunch of the characters. Uh, I found some of the kind of minor characters a bit more... Just irritating more than interesting. Um... <laughs> Some of them you Look, like your a lot. childhood wasn't ruined by clamp. Yes, whereas a uh, lady over here is head over heels for man bun. I wouldn't say I'm head over heels. I just like him as a character a bunch. Okay. I don't go for high school students, thank you very and much. You ship I'm a him, old and you ship that. him with spiky haired shonen protagonist. But not the main <laughs> guy. Uh, I like I like Kagayama a lot, the um sour puss. On... I mean, I think our lead pair. Yeah. Because I enjoy the Jaco- so they totally rub each other in the wrong way initially, which mm. isn't mm. quite unique. I mm. appreciate the degree to which they were both remain. A lot of shonen will give you like your shonen lead, Genki, Genki, and then there's the one guy in the group who is an asshole, and it's just like meh, you suck, me. And for some reason, he's part of the group, and the Genki lead will be like, ah, oh, we're all friends. Yeah. That's not what you get with no, Kageyama, they... <laughs> Kageyama and Hinata, yeah. who uh, remain fairly... It's not that they're... Because they don't hate each other. Mm-hmm. They definitely... They come to very much respect one another and like each other, but they also aren't really interested in admitting that. Yeah. So they continue to pick at each other fairly frequently, but in a way that's also not irritating. The show really picks up, though, during the actual games themselves. Mm. Um, the my favorite episodes are definitely the ones where they played the posh school. Aoba Josai. Aoba Josai with my waifu. Oh my god! What's his name? Oh, it's your waifu, and you can't even remember. I can never name. remember his name. Oh, Okabe. No. What? That's oh. not even Japanese. He's that... a... Oikawa. Oikawa. Yeah. My thing. Waifu. How can you say that someone's your waifu when you don't even remember their name? Look, I'm just so. It's it's not him I love. It's his serve. I love the anime. Sounds kinky. 
the animation for his sir is wonderful because they do the full like he has this stoop as he goes into it and they animate the whole thing this whole movement and they keep reusing the same that's one thing the show like it's beautifully animated they sure do use a hell of a lot of the like particularly the returns you see them do the oh yes. i mean you'd have to because yes. they t put so much effort into yeah you know animating some parts of the game that mm. there's no way in heck that they could you know have the output they need if yes. they never use stock footage so i did quite like that uh so they animated the guy's serve absolutely beautifully and then reused that over and over again <laughs> it's a fun show yeah i really enjoy it i think it also uh gets better as time goes on Definitely. because the third season of this is quite frankly my mm. god it's probably the best of sports anime that i've ever seen honestly i haven't seen hejimi no Epo, so i don't want to I am willing to say it. Okay. Because it's it, it's really good. You'd think 10 episodes of a single volleyball match, like, mm. oh, God, that's going to be awful. No, it's fantastic. But yeah. that doesn't come for a while. Yeah. Good news. We are getting a season four later this year. Yeah. Um, speaking of sports anime, do we want to talk about... The more... Uh, elite art pop? horse one? Art, art horse. Art wow. Horse. The art, art horse. The art, art house. Yes, this was the Noitamino show this season, uh, Ping Pong, by Masaki Yuasa. And it, it, not, so Yuasa is, is definitely your, I keep saying elite, but that's the wrong word, definitely your critic's favourite director. Critical darling. Critical darling director. Um, and he, he director of... Devil Man Cry Baby, Kaiba Academy Galaxy, etc. Uh, and he was adapting a manga by another, like, critic's favorite, critic's darling mangaka. Mm. Um, done stuff like Tech and Crinket and so on. Mm -hmm. Very scratchy, scratchy art style, which the two of them kind of go quite well together. The Yuasa's mm -hmm. style and this thing style. I don't actually like the style very much. I like the show well enough, but I like it more for. Like some of the very dramatic, how would you say? Like there was some I very. No, I didn't watch it. I'm not really a Yuasa fan. Yeah, there's some very dramatic. Like, I my life is flashing before my eyes, and I'm wondering what I'm doing with myself in the middle of this ping pong game, kind of thing. Mm. And some of the ways they would add, show that was very effective mm -hmm. and interesting. I'm not sure I actually like the guy's art style very much, which I know is going to be heresy, but. Yeah, it's a fun, it's a cool show. It's very, it's very different. It's a very different type of sports show. Look, mm. as far as I'm aware, the only ping pong that got made was that really shitty show from the '90s that kept getting released in the West. Ping the pong club. Pink, the one that was like I watched. God, the rest. that thing sucks. Incredibly crude. Oh, it's. <sighs> that it's definitely of that era of Western anime promotion where it's like. This shit ain't for kids. Whoa, check this shit out. Oh my god. The first episode was quite This racist. is a cartoon? The, fir oh. the first episode was one of those racist shows that's all like, hey, foreigners smell. Yeah, I, I, I saw like two episodes of it back in, oh god, probably 2000, yeah. 2001 or so. That was not a good show. Anyway, it, though. That didn't air this season. Uh, so what else can kind of... So there was a bunch of, like... We've kind of covered the big one in Haikyuu. Well, I mean... Well, I'm okay. Gonna, before oh, we I'm, get to, I'm mixing this up with a different one. Never mind. Before we get down to the sequels, anyway. We can talk about them later. But, um... So one thing... There were a couple of, like, small things here. Like, Chaika. Uh, or what's Coffin Princess. Yeah. A small little series by Bones that... I mean, I wouldn't go so far as to call it small. I think it did quite well in the West. I, I think it did all... It wasn't a mega hit. No, but I don't a, think it was... You know, a yeah. tiny audience either. How much of this did you watch? None. Oh. It wasn't, it was, wasn't my kind of show. I think I watched like two episodes. A lot of people tweeted about it. I remember that. It Even back in 2014, it took a bit of... Hmm. I wasn't just going to plop down and write a light novel, watch a light novel adaptation uh, because it existed. Is you a, get what I mean? Is a Kumano Riddler light novel or was that a manga? No, that was a manga. Yeah, that's a Yuri. Uh, Riddle Story of the Devil. Mm. Uh, calling it Yuri is overselling it. It's, oh, you have this class of assassins at the school. I think they're called the Black Class. Mm. And there is one girl in the class, though, who the assignment for the school year is you have to kill her. <laughs> and it's like, oh. And then one of the girls is like, 
actually, no, I'm going to protect her. And that's, so the rest of the show is all the other ones trying to kill her. That sounds pretty stupid. Um, it's fine. It's oh. nothing fantastic. It's enjoyable. The explanation for why the girl wanted to protect her is pretty stupid, and I don't think it's the same in the manga. Mm. Um, there's one girl who is, you know, one of the crazy assassins who it turns out that her dad, that she's got two dads. And she's sort of like, oh yeah, she's got two dads. And it's not really true. It's a big deal. Which, you know, look, that's kind of cool too. Um, granted, her dad's her assassin, so maybe not the best role models. Um, Perfect role models. It's fine. It's a 12 episode series. If you, if that sounds like the sort of thing you'd like, it'll probably be perfectly fine for you. Uh So we might as well actually cover some of the big light novels this season because there were actually a number of big light novel adaptations. Mm. The biggest one... Actually, I don't know which one of these ones two are bigger. Our two options are... Well, you have three listed there. Yeah, so one of them was Black Bullet, which was just one of those like fairly unremarkable generic things that weirdly Um, large number of people watched. It was... So Black Bullet was... um, it was, uh, you know, oh, we have these tiny little girls and they're killers type thing. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't watch it, but I know that the light novels adapted from were pretty unrelentingly grim. Oh, really? So it's not really... Saying it's generic, I think, is putting it wrong hmm. because it's like really, really grim and a very gloomy outlook. Mm. And, you know, there's these little girls that are killers. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Anyway. But the other two... So one of these I think people thought would be bigger because it was huge as a light novel in Japan. But then the other one ended up doing better abroad. I think it's I think I would... Well, I think I know... Well, why don't you just... So the first one is Mahoka. Or... What is... What's the... God, I don't know. I have no idea what the full title is. Oh, crap. Um... Mahoka in the middle of nowhere. That's not it. No. Um, it's like one of those things that's incest, but also very much like we're definitely not incest. This relationship is not incestuous. So How dare you suggest it is. Tatsumi, the world's most overpowered character. Was he Tatsumi? Yes. Are you sure? This show is... I watched this whole thing. Oh, no. We need to figure out... Oh, the irregular at Magic High. The irregular at Magic High School. Thank you. Um, this this really show cool. sucks. This show is fucking awful. <laughs> Holy shit. I watched this whole thing and I've written, honestly, one of my best posts I ever wrote, you know, just going to say this out there, is my uh, my review of Mahoka. See, I didn't last season say one of my best posts ever written was about pupa and here you are <laughs> being like, ooh, check out my blog. Um, Mahoka is so aggressively shit in almost every way you can think of. It is the most, like, self-insert, I am god mode main character who like there's no there's no challenge there's no tension in the show because the character is so overpowered nothing can ever happen and it doesn't play this for comedy because it will then treat it like there's a new thing coming up and then he just solves the problem also whenever they can introduce something that makes the main character look uh make him more powerful they will and they will continuously do it's like oh he actually invents flight at one point oh yeah so the premise is you have a magic high school Mm -hmm. and Because this totally makes sense, they have it divided into, like, the kids who have good magic ability and the ones who either don't have any ability or just have crap ability. And they call them the weeds. Yes. Like, that's that's what the school calls them. Yes. And here's the thing. So, like, that could be an interesting setup for a show because the main character is put into the weeds because he's not very good at moving a block across the table. Yeah. Um... And his little sister, meanwhile, is in the... What do they call the... It's the elite class. I don't know yeah. what the hell it's called. Anyway, and so the main character is put in the crappy class. And then he's just like, oh, could this could be like... But then the crappy class goes and beats on the elites. And you could... What you could say is like, oh, this is a, a commentary on why splitting up uh, classes based on ability 
and treating the people who aren't smart, who like fail your entrance exam as second class citizens is bad. Mm -hmm. That's not what they say. Yeah, it's this is what's weird because it sets it up and you look at it and you think, oh, yes, this is going to be about like, oh, yeah, the the underdogs are going to yeah. come through. And that's totally not no. what happens. What the, they say, this is wrong, not because the inherent system is flawed, but because the system didn't put Tatsumi in the best class. Yeah. It's, no, it's Tatsuya. Tatsuya. Yes, thank you. The show is bizarrely, extremely, like, right-wing. Yeah. It's like, it's one of those four, those uh, two-chan, hyper-nationalist, reactionary right-wing that's racist against the Chinese as well. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. racist, it's sexist, it's classist. Yes. It is. And on top of that, it's also, like, blandly animated, incredibly boring, waste time just making the main character look like the most... And he'll randomly introduce a nuke at the last thing. The main character is not an interesting or fun person either. He's he's emotionless and bland and like doesn't give a shit about people. It is a terrible, terrible anime. Really can't stress just how awful this thing is. It was huge in Japan. Yeah. Huge in Japan. Okay. Whew, I feel a bit exhausted now. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the other show was... Um, no was, Game, No Life, which is about... Another pair of siblings with yeah. kind of a questionable relationship, although not yeah. quite as intensely or overtly, who are like masters at games and it's vaguely isekai. Yeah, it's isekai. It's a Sword Art Nine esque isekai. It's one of those. Yeah, they ones. like these two siblings end up in a parallel world and they just kick ass at games because in this parallel world, games are a really big deal and yeah. these siblings just happen to be really good at games. Mm. When I say games, I mean like. Board games, card games, those yeah. kind of things. Um, um, I remember it being very colorful. Yes, that was my main memory of it as well. Uh, I remember there being a dog girl who just gets constantly shat on by the show, which mm. I've never found. Like, shows that just have a character that designated shit on this character thing. Mm. I, I don't like that. I don't find it funny. I don't find it entertaining. I find it pointless. It's like... Haha, <laughs> look, we're treating this person like garbage. Isn't that cool? Did no. You, do you watch any of this? I watched the first episode. I didn't it's even... very colorful. It's also totally not my thing. Yeah, it's. A, I didn't even watch that, honestly, because I think this was too soon after Sword Art Online. Actually, to be honest, if it came out today, I probably still wouldn't watch it because we still get, you know, oh, video game isekais. So. so it was at the time, though, seen as being... Like, oh, this is a little bit different from a lot of the isekai stuff yes. that we're seeing because it wasn't so video game based and it was hmm. fantasy, but not. Yeah, it wasn't a. It was, but it was fantasy of a very kind of. Yes, it wasn't like, elves and goblins. Low intensity variety, yes. I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah, it was interesting. It did really, really well in the West. It did really well. It also did really well in Japan, though. Yeah. Um, I will note that both of these that we're talking about, the light novels are being still published in English. Mm, really? So they've done decently enough. Both of them did decently enough in the West that the light novels were licensed mm. and they haven't been canceled or consigned to the garbage heap yeah. of history. So for better or worse. Um, and in fact, with um, Irregular Magic High, they have also licensed a bunch of the spinoff material. Oh, huh, great. So unfortunately, it seems like that's done decently at least in the printed form which yeah. is kind of a drag i see more a lot more criticisms at least of mahoka than i do for like no game no life i mean the ways in which i don't like no game no life are a lot less yeah yeah it's just like there's some stuff you could, there's certainly stuff to criticize in it but it isn't like this author thinks that china should be nuked yes which you know yeah because like it's kind of a because like there is a trend of quite uh, right wing light novels, especially isekai type ones, and like whatever. I'm a diehard lefty. I, like they'll I'll always have kind of I'll struggle with a lot of them anyway. But sometimes I can recognize like Gate, for example, is oh, is like arguably as right wing as this. Maybe not quite as much. It's focusing on something a little different. Uh, but like that one's actually I mean, it's right wing in a way though that is in. It's more specific. I mean, it's in a fantasy... So much of it's in a fantasy world that is more of a straight-up fantasy world as opposed yeah. to, like, the real world but with magic. Yeah. So when it's like, 
you know. I think Gate Gate is a far more interesting and well made show as well. Exactly. Well, yeah. it's certainly much better made. Yes. Um, was Gate also made by Madhouse? I don't know actually. Because I yes. know Irregular was, and it, it was, was definitely it. one of their worst efforts. Yeah. Um. Anyway. But to God, there's a lot of light novels this season, honestly. Such as? Uh, so, if I'm not mistaken, Makaku City Actors was a light novel. I... Th- it may have been a mixed media project, granted. But it was... I'm pretty sure it was a light novel at some point, it too. It was music videos first. Well, all of those ones were. Yes, but this one specifically was like a series of mu- stories told through music videos. Was Brunhilder Bernhil- in the Darkness no, a light novel? that's a manga. Oh. It's by the author of Elf and Lead. Lead. And, I yes. know that, but for some reason that was a light novel. The only really notable thing about Bryn Hilder, aside from being like kind of crap, was that it had like a dubstep opening. Cool. Yeah. I think that also had ugly school uniforms. Yes, that is true. Um, and it didn't do nearly as well as... Elf and Lead. Well, yeah, yes. that would have been hard. Yes. Was Na 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 Na's Buried Treasure light novel? I'm 90% certain it was. That was a Noitamina show alongside yes, Pinkball. Yes, that was the other Noitamina. Very weird pick for Noitamina. Well, maybe less so weird nowadays, but... As time went on, I think it, it's it, it's on in a pick. Yeah. Na 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 Na's Buried Treasure was a light novel in which... A like ghost a, girl? Yeah, it's a ghost girl. Na Na... The titular Na 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 herself. Mm-hmm. Um... Who's like, hey, boy, you need to find my buried treasure. Yeah. Uh, she had purple hair. I don't remember anything else. No, nope, I mean, neither. I think it was... Some of the people lady. I knew who saw it, it was like, well, the premise in some of what it does is at least a little bit different from the usual, but I don't think mm. people thought it was good. Is Ever Flag Breaks a light novel? No, that's like a... Is that a game? No. You saw I, I think it was just a manga. Oh, okay. What's this one about? You saw this. Uh, this was the one where, th- so the premise is this boy can see death flags above people's heads. Oh, okay. So, and he's like, oh shit, I need to do something. And this ends up uh, developing into him having a coterie of girls around him. I thought it was romance flags. Uh, you know what? I think he can also see those. But yeah, because it was the like... The driving force, though, is... The death flags, because oh, that okay. one ends up being why he acts. And it's then he has moments where it's like, oh, shit, by acting in the way that I did, there's a romance flag there, and that was yep. not my intent. Okay. Oh, crap. Uh, it was definitely, it had some really bizarre stuff in it, though. Hmm. And that, I liked the bizarre stuff. Um, the, the romance stuff was kind of like, eh. Um, anyway, do you want to actually... Uh, we'll take a left turn here and go to some of the sequels, because there were a lot of huge sequels this season. Well, it's either sequels or we take a left turn and talk about mech shows. Yeah. Um, how about, though, there's a couple of shows that I watched either all or part of that we haven't gotten okay. to, where I don't know where else we would discuss them. Um, one was Kamigami no Asobi, which was a an Otome adaptation in which all the love interests are gods. Uh, and they have transformations where yes. their clothes explode. Very, very well animated magical transformations. Yes, sequences. where their clothes explode. Yeah. Which, I, it's it was fine. There's nothing, <sighs> other than the exploding clothes, there's nothing particularly remarkable about it. Um, luckily, the female lead is an actually fairly decently active human being. Mm. Um, but it's not like she's particularly interesting. Mm. It's just, you know, exploding clothes transformations involving boys. Naturally. The other show you were going to talk about, though, is the one that I think is the much more interesting one. Uh, it also is the much more successful one. True. Um, Selector Infected Wee Cross is actually how it's pronounced, although... Weak I, sauce. Everybody sort of said weak sauce for ages until it became... Yeah. Until the title's meaning became clear, which yes. happens in the sequel to this. Uh, this. This is one of the few things that I would point to and be like, ah... This is probably an offspring of Madoka. Granted, one that hmm. goes a bit afield of Madoka because yes. it is about there's a girl and there's this card game that she's decided she wants to try. It's a cross between Madoka and Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. Or, you know, like early Yu-Gi-Oh. Yes. Um, there's this card ge- collectible card game she wants to try called Wii Cross. And so she buys some packages of it. And, oh, it's, but it's very strange because... 
um, one of the cards is moving and is trying to talk to her. And she's like, well, uh, maybe I need some sleep. No, actually, girl, you are now involved in this hmm. card game in which... Of life and death. Well, it's if you, you know, end up being the overall champion, you'll get a wish granted. <gasps> Just so like Madoka. Madoka. Um, and, and those who don't get their life wish granted? Ah, uh, that's a spoiler. Thank you. Okay. So... Well, you don't die. Okay. It's get sent to the Shadow Realm. No, you don't get sent to the Shadow Realm. Um, you, yeah. I'm not no going to spoil it. But okay. you don't die. You don't go to the Shadow Realm. It's a lot less seemingly dramatic, but for a... I think it's also... It's not super dramatic, but it's also fairly devastating if you give it much thought. How about mm. that? Okay. Um, and so she ends up befriending a girl in her class who's also involved with it. And she's like, oh, you're a selector too. And, you know, the question is then what people's wishes end up being. Because the lead, hers is just like, I want to win so that, you know, my card can... I think, if I'm remembering correctly, my card can have, like... A real life and not have to fight anymore um her friend though is in love the friend's in love with the friend's brother though uh yeah so her thing is like i want to live in a world where i can you know marry my brother okay uh and then one of the other girls is just like i want to make friends okay um the backgrounds are fantastic uh, yeah you were... the backgrounds are oh i would buy an art book just of the backgrounds uh and it one of the so they end up having a, there ended up being a spinoff from this series. Um, it's like Selector Infected. Hmm. I don't remember the name of it, but uh, they did not have the same studio doing the background work. Same. There must have been a single artist who was doing them. I imagine. Uh, no, it was uh, it was a con. I'm pretty sure it was subcontracted. Hmm. I just don't remember to whom. I want to say Studio Pablo, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't them. Okay. Studio Pablo though is known for their good backgrounds. Hmm. Uh, I ended up really liking this. Hmm. Um, I felt like, bizarrely enough, for a property that was not aimed at teenage girls, I felt like it did a very good job of depicting, you know, the ways in which it can feel to be a teenager. Hmm. And, yeah, some of the stuff is like, this is kind of melodramatic and ridiculous. But it's like, yeah, but this is also fairly accurate to how it feels in the moment. And... You know, for example, the girl who's in love with her brother is like, yeah, this is kind of a ridiculous thing, but it's not really that different from anyone who's ever had a crush on someone that they felt like they shouldn't, is it? Yeah. Uh, anyway, I really liked it. Uh, it did well enough to get a spinoff, and if I'm not mistaken, they're getting yet another spinoff. My understanding is you haven't really liked any of the spinoffs, though. No, th so... Uh, didn't have the background. If these first two ones, well, that too, but mm. these first two ones, mm. do you know who is the right script writer? Is it Mario Kata? Yep. <laughs> and they got rid of her on the spinoff, and I think that was a bad idea. because it I seems think, like a her kind of show. Yes. yes. And I think... I forgot they, about there that. There were also some other changes with the sequels, like mm. in the original, it's only teen girls who can participate, boys can't. Uh, so the girl with the very mad okay. So the girl with the brother, he mm. knows about it, but he can't see like the cards moving or anything. Mm. And in the spinoff, guys are involved, which I think it puts a different tone to things. Um, yeah, that, there's a lot of characters, and some of the villains in this too are just pretty over the top. What was that dark magical girl show? That where one of them was a dude who just wanted to be a magical girl. Oh, Magical Girl Raising Project? Yeah, I thought he was the, one of the best characters in that show. Well, I yeah. don't think in the spinoff, Adding Kai's added anything. Yeah. And I think it detracted from a bunch of the stuff. Mm -hmm. Also, I would contrast this with the spinoff in that 
this never felt mean spirited. Oh, it's a like dis- when bad stuff was happening, it never felt like it was just being done because we're trying to be really grim here. Because that's what a lot of Madoka spin-offs fall into, and I know you think of that, Madoka. I disagree on that. I don't think it is mean spirited, but you do. I think at points it is. Uh, but like a lot of them fall into this. Like the reason Madoka was a success, and part of the reason it was a success was because of how like shocking all these dark things that are happening. But it feels like a lot of them, they follow up on, they don't have a heart to them. That's why they come off across as mean-spirited. It's probably why that one with the girl in the wheelchair did quite well as well, because that wasn't mean-spirited either. I thought that some of the stuff that happens late, okay. Mm. The way, um, yours is Yuki, who knows a hero. I yeah. found the entire way it framed the transformation and its visual treatment of its wheelchair-bound character was kind of off-putting and disgusting, mm. because... Like, she's the one whose transformations involve boob bounce. Okay. And I felt like it was rather... I don't remember that. I didn't watch much of that show. Yeah. And I do think that some of the developments that happened later on, to Mm. me, were not justified. How far did you watch that? Because I I, Um, I guess you... I think around episode, like, eight or nine. Okay. Maybe you watched further than that. I didn't actually watch any of that, so... Maybe you know better than uh, me. But we can talk about it when we get yeah. there, because it's a subsequent season, is it not? Yeah. Let's do the sequels now. Yeah, we can move away from... Anyway, yeah. I like We Cross a lot. Yeah. I wouldn't bother with any of the spinoffs. Hmm. So it's Selector Infected and Selector Spread We Cross. <laughs> also, it has really stupid names. I, I think Selector Infected We Cross is okay if it's like... Selector Spread We Cross is pretty like, bad. It's... It's like something you find in an MRE that's a replacement item. <laughs> like, ah, oh, yes, it's the it's the wheat cross spread. Yep, yep. Put that on your snack bread. You won't poop for weeks. Um, anyway, speaking of not sequels. pooping for weeks. Wait, what? Okay, I can't think of anything to cook. Um, there were some poop jokes in Stardust Crusaders, right? Oh, yeah, the guy tried to poop uh, in an uh, old-fashioned toilet in Egypt. And he had to wipe his butt with sand, and there was a pig eating the shit. <laughs> uh, I see we're being culturally sensitive with JoJo's. Uh, Stardust Crusade. Uh, Stardust Crusade. I mean, JoJo's, JoJo's kind of didn't really blow up, but was a success. Hmm. It was a fairly big success. And then they were like, oh, this is done well. Let's make more. And then they made Stardust. And Stardust has always been the biggest part of JoJo's. Hmm. Uh, I think maybe some of the newest ones. I think JoJo Line has been huge. I think Steel Ball 1 was also fairly big. So, I know Stardust Crusaders in the West, at least, I think, because it was the one that was actually published. Yes. I mean, it was the one that had an anime, it was the one that had a game. Yeah. But this was where JoJo's blew up. It blew up in Japan with Stardust as well. Mm-hmm. Like, this thing was huge. And so they got they got to make Stardust, and it was huge. And then they've continued making JoJo's ever since. It's a cool title. Yeah. It's a fantastic title. I know it's not one you really liked, though. I, yeah. I don't. I didn't like the swap to a more months of the week style. Uh, I felt it kind of it hampered the dramatic tension of a lot of the, the the episodes. Like things didn't feel like the world was ending in every single fight, like it would because it because you Wasn't know this the season with a steamroller though. Yes. Okay. So that so that's the thing. Those fights at the very end were actually really good because the world was ending. Basically, mm-hmm. it's kind of like. It's the reason why Gurren Lagann is so good, because every fight is bigger than the last, and it keeps going bigger and bigger. You that know? actually makes me think of Simfu Gear. Because mm. Simfu Gear, every... Well, subsequent to the first season, mm. every season opens with something really, like, mm. ridiculously dramatic. Mm. And it is like, a, oh, if we don't do this, the world's going to die type mm. thing. And then, like, it settles down into the more weekly type stuff. Yeah. Anyway, it's an interesting approach. Yeah, I'm not as keen on it as like kind of the approach to it. Uh, the other problem though, and this was actually a problem with the final fight as well, the pacing's off. It was too yeah, slow. Yeah, or are you thinking the pacing was, was pretty bad? It was way too slow. And they fixed that in later seasons. I'm still watching. Uh, Although, based on some of the criticisms I've heard of uh, Ventorio, it sounds like maybe that hasn't completely been dealt with. It's still too slow, uh, I think, because they really like sped up the first two arcs. Uh, it's still too slow, to but... To be fair, the first two arcs comprise so little material to begin yeah, with. but they did speed up. Um, unfortunately, I wish they could... Problem is, uh, those two arcs are so old, and like people look back at them as like, you know, there was a good idea here. Mm. Um, but so they were able to... So they had more 
leeway with fans to cut a lot of content whereas I feel like people would have got really annoyed if they cut stuff from Stardust Crusaders but again weren't, absolutely I want to say the first two ones are so but I don't think they're they very are, long they're shorter manga yes but like and even their season wasn't very long yes but even taking that into account they cut a lot hmm. yeah yeah but that was Stardust uh, the actual biggest anime of this and arguably of the entire decade Uh-oh. at least for TV anime because I'd say I'd say, I would say your name was bigger than this, but probably. Oh, are you gonna say the one I think you're gonna say, or are you gonna say one of those other ones? No, Love Live season two. Yeah, God. Best selling anime of the decade, apart uh, TV anime of the decade. So what's interesting here is that this is actually where Love Live really took off in terms yep. of being a huge hit. Um, the second season sold. Uh, the second season did better than the first season. Yeah. Uh, and it did lead to a bump in sales for the first season because people went back to buy that. Yep. And this thing, I mean, we've talked about Love Live before on this and when we did the first season there. But I mean, this is the kind of thing that was selling like... Like 100,000 copies. Yeah. yeah well, was... I know the movie sold, I want to say the movie sold like 500,000. Yeah. Um, the TV series per, you know, per volume disc, like we're talking the 70 and 80,000s and 90,000s. It sold better than Monogatari, than back in Monogatari. This sold ridiculously well. Yeah. This is what Sunrise has been doing instead of Mac shows. Yeah. No, that's not true. They were I still mean, doing Mac shows. Well, it kind of is. Kind of. But um, I mean, I did, I did it kills me, though, that they... I would love to see a spinoff of this that did put them in Max. I really would. But, yeah. But given how poorly Idol I Masters and Aglossia did for Sunrise in, like, yeah. 2007 or 8, that seems unlikely. And as we've said with Love Live before, what kind of sets... It, one, one thing that's quite unusual about it is it's an Idol show... That did incredibly well in the West as well. Yes, yes. Because none of the others really did. Yeah. Not I, even Prince Sama, which I was surprised that you were pointing out to me. Yeah, I mean, it did okay. It did a lot better than any yeah. of the other ones really have, but... But Love um, Live is on a completely other level to anything. Love Live was licensed by NIS America, which mm. actually does a lot more games licensing. Yeah. They had a t- For a short period of time, they were doing kind of primo releases of shows like... They did Toradora was one of them. Mm. Uh, I want to say they did Persona of Eternity Soul. They licensed Love Live. And I know that the first season went for multiple reprints. Yeah. It did really well for them. And there were stories like the movies repeatedly I mean, the mo- the movies went into American theaters, which... Yeah. Like, the idea that you would have this, you know... It was reviewed by. I remember there was the Arizona Repu- Arizona Republic, the newspaper, by very uh, confused. Did a review of it, and you know, an accurate review. Well, I think it's a little harsher than necessary because the person really had no idea what they were looking at. Yeah, and they were also pretty clearly disdainful of anime as an art form. Yeah. So I don't know if I'd say it was fair. It did nothing to win him over. Well, no, but. <laughs> I know. What could it have? It well, was a movie. I know. That was a sequel to two TV series. <laughs> about idols, yes. Anyway, but we'll talk about the movie later. Yeah. I don't really... The second season... Honestly, I think the first two... The original series of Love Live, I don't think it's good. And I don't think the second season really does anything better than the it. first season. I really don't. It took me a very long time to watch both seasons because... Mm. I don't get it. I just don't. I really don't. Um, You're a sunrise. Not sunrise, a sunshine. Yeah, I think sunshine is a big improvement. Mm. Um, you know, this was the season that did come up with, which did include Snow Halation, which is, I will say, a pretty solid pop song. Okay. I think much of the music from the franchise is forgettable. Snow Halation is actually a pretty decent darn pop song. You're the one who plays the games with all the songs of them. Yeah, but you notice I play it often on mute. That's true. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess there must be something in it because clearly a lot of people have gone nuts for it, but I don't really get it. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it benefits from the fact that it was pretty colorful. You know, the character designs are pleasant to put, look at, even if they do suffer from same face. Hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so. We had some other, I mean, there are some other big sequels. It's just. So this was a se- Big in different ways. This was a sequel that had, was nine years in the making. <laughs> and like, for 
And very oddly, actually was a very big seller when it originally aired. Mm. This is Mushishi Season 2. Mm. Uh, which for a very like laid back, not particularly fan service show. In what way would it be considered fan service? No, not fan service. Like, there's nothing about that that would imply that it'd be a crowd pleaser, but it was a big seller mm. uh, back when it aired. And it was definitely a critical darling as well. Um, it was always odd that it never got a sequel, but I guess they just wanted more of the manga to come out. Yeah. And then one finally came out nine seasons later, and it was every bit as good as season one. I'm a, I am a huge Mushishi fan. It's I know. one of my favorite anime of all time. You were trying to talk to me about Mushishi the other day when we were out running. Yes. I just... It's a... Oh, God, how do I even talk about Mushishi? If you somehow haven't heard of Mushishi, it's about... Uh, these creatures called Mushi, which are like weird, kind of like cross between bugs and bacteria that roam the world and basically interact with humans and sometimes bad shit happens. And then the main character is like a traveling doctor who goes to towns and goes, oh, your problem are there's Mushis in you. Let me cure it for you. But it never goes quite according to plan. Or no, it sometimes does, but the Mushi are weird. So weird. But it's also, it's very nature it's very like weird, weird, creepy power of nature. You know, thinking on it, and I didn't, I don't know, this show didn't work for me, even though I feel like it should have, because mm. it really hits a lot of the sort of things I like. But mm. it's interesting because I find myself thinking, it makes me think of Mononoke. Yes. It uh, also in fact, makes me think a little bit yeah. of Pet Shop of Horrors. Yes. Mononoke, in fact, Mononoke sold really well as well, and it and Mushishi were often compared. Mm. Along with Kino's Journey was another one they compared it to a lot. Uh, I don't Yeah, Kino's... I find myself wondering who did the soundtrack for Mushishi, because... I don't know, it's very... Um, the one who did it for... I think Mononoke has a very good soundtrack, and it's someone who does a lot of horror soundtracks. Um, yeah. Uh, Yasuharu Takanashi. It's one of those soundtracks where it's just lots of, like, quiet noise and then occasionally someone hits a single key on a piano kind of thing. Mm, probably yeah. not Takanashi yeah. then. Yeah, you know, a random guitar strum here. It is a magical show. It is... It can be a quite... It, it, like, alternates between, like, horror and, like, the most uplifting things. There are some really horrible, really horror-inducing episodes. One about a guy who kills someone... And then he's been infected by a mushi of death, and it, like he walks everywhere, plants grow up behind him. Hmm. It's and the whole town gets covered in it, and they can't track down why. Uh, and the and Ginko walks in, and he's like, he realizes straight away what's happened, mm-hmm. but he doesn't know who's originating it from. It's it's one of the later episodes. Another one about you know a uh, lady who can't stay anywhere because where she stays somewhere it rains. Hmm. Um, and it's all about her. Basically, basically, it's about her. Like, she brings a lot of joy to towns that suffer from, like, droughts. Right. But she also then lives a life of perpetual loneliness because she can never stay anywhere. Mm. Which is similar to where all our main character goes. So they have this real connection. And then God, they have to leave. Be, you know, social media would have been a boon for <laughs> her. You're not wrong. She would have loved Twitter. <laughs> just her taking her pictures. Of, oh, God, I just meant her, like, taking slightly awkward selfies. <laughs> feeling cute move to another new town today <laughs> might delete this later it's a it's a wonderful show and like the fact that season two was just as good as season one is incredible it's weird because like i'd almost give this my anime of the decade hmm. but it's just more mishishi so it feels weird giving it to that i have other you're allowed to set whatever i know it just feels weird giving it to a sequel it's, it's like oh yeah my favorite anime from last decade is also my favorite anime from this decade ha, ha, ha. i love this show what about sequels that you think are better than okay well but what if yes. what if you pick aquarion evil is one of your favorites that's a sequel <laughs> obviously because the thing is between my season one and season two because it's got a very i mean it's not stylized but it's very watercolor drawings with very simple character designs it's a lot of green there's green everywhere in the show um, oh god there's an episode where characters get their souls sucked out through a mirror and eventually the mirror comes to life and starts to crawl towards them oh this show's great oh, now i'm thinking of squealy spooch from the angry beavers yeah. again <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> but that's mishishi season two uh so there were other sequels to see uh so these are kind of important to talk about even though neither one of us watch them. Give a shit. Uh, or, or the, yeah, okay, fine. We also don't give a shit. Yeah. Uh, well, we are You're both... the one who said it. So one of them is Fairy Tale. 
which got its second season here, mm. which is has taken over the mantle of the Shonen series you don't see any anime fans talk about, but actually has a huge number of people who watch it, but that's all they watch. Yeah. It's that show. It's um, it was, It's never been on the scale of Naruto Bleach, but it's been on the scale of, I mean, in the West. I mean, it's continued to it can, like, bop along. Absolute massive numbers of people watch Fairy Tale. Yeah. But again, I think it's it's one of those long-running shows that that's all they watch. Yeah, yeah. Or mm. um, I think it's one of those shows that people who aren't watching, people mm. who used to watch anime and don't watch anything else anymore are mm. only watching this. Yeah. Uh, people just keep up with fairy tale every week. It continues. Put it this way: when there was news about uh, there potentially being a second season, it was the most read story on ANN for that entire year. It just—I'll admit—it cracks me up because I remember when the author did Rave Master, and no one in the West paid any attention to that. Mm. And that did air on US TV mm. for a bit, at least. I've seen people with fairy tale t-shirts in the wild in like completely non-anime settings. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's that level. It's arguably as big as... I see the thing is, I don't know how many people watch it illegally though, because you don't really hear... I feel like there's also, unfortunately, a lot of people who are watching it illegally. Yeah, because you don't hear it talked in the same level as like Attack on Titan when it comes to sales, Mm. for example, or Impact. Even though I'm aware that probably as many people watch this as watch Titan. Just mm. maybe they're a different type of audience. I also... I suspect it might skew a little younger than yeah. the people we usually interact with. True. Yeah. Fairy tale's huge. But if you want to talk about arguably the biggest shonen of all time, probably is... I mean, I don't know what else comes close. What else could beat it is Dragon Ball Z. And the reason we're bringing this up, because um, we... Dragon Ball Kai, I think started like 2008, mm. and this is the kind of sequel where they cover the Majin Buu um, uh, series, Majin Buu arcs. I don't know yeah. how, much, how much do you know about Dragon I, Ball? I think the amount that I know, um, let's see, what do I know about Dragon Ball? There are these Dragon Balls, there's some guy named Broly, <laughs> um, there's a green guy. Piccolo. The um the, the dub introduced it's over nine thousand. That's true. So um, I I have actually watched Dragon Ball. I watched watch it as a kid. Um as, so I watched from the opening arc, uh which is I oh god I can't remember the guy who comes down and then he goes, Oh, but now Planet Vegeta is coming and Goku dies. And then uh, I've watched wow, spoilers. Yeah, then I watched so I watched the, most of the Vegeta arc. I don't know how it ends, but also when they power up their hair turns blonde and goes yes. flying. Uh, I've, I have, they're like wah, wah, wah. I have seen the freeze arc and I've seen the cell arc and then I stopped watching a GT so I have no idea what happens in the Majin Buu arc uh, but yeah they aired Dragon Ball Kai which was a re-edited version where they cut out a lot of bullshit <laughs> and in many you mean mo- the like 10 episodes of screaming at each other that the franchise was infamous yes, for they cut out a lot of that and it caused the resurgence in Dragon Ball on a on a genuinely really significant level mm-hmm. and arguably made it one of the most important significant anime of the decade really mm. it caused a resurgence and i think it brought people back into anime as a whole mm. the people who used to watch dragon ball as a kid stopped watching it they heard there was this new version so they checked that out and they really enjoyed it because it's very well made mm-hmm. and there's there is something to dragon ball and they all came back and watched more anime mm-hmm. it's just it's cool i'm i Glad for them. Dragon Ball is also, is it not the example of hold on to your rights? Yes. Creative rights. Oh yeah, Akira Toriyama is not happy about. He really did not, he actually sees very little of the profits from this because Mm. his initial contract wasn't. Very good, no. It was not very advantageous for him. He's obviously made a lot of money in the meantime, he's a big name. but Yeah, he's and I mean he's done other stuff that has done pretty well. Uh, st- interestingly, though, uh, he definitely, from a Western perspective, is other outside of Dragon Ball. Hmm. What if his stuff has really had much of an impact abroad? It's in video games where you see it. It's like Chrono Trigger, for mm. example. But you know, I, things it's more like, character designs. But yeah, yeah. But like Doctor Slump, no. Who has even interacted with that at all in the yeah. West? 
Uh, he does stuff for like Dragon Quest, but even they're bigger in Japan than yeah. the West. But yeah, that's Dragon Ball Kai. That was kind of... Oh, no, there's a No, few. we've got our mech shows. we got to cover our mechs. Oh, we also have another sequel we haven't touched on. Oh, God, so it or not. I almost just don't want to talk about it. I don't have it. anything to say about it. It was the most aggressively... I mean, i not the it's biggest... It's just like, hey, remember Soul Eater? Remember how stylish it was? Yeah. Um, we made this sequel that's Gen- kind of Gen- generic Q-Gra- slice of life bullshit. It, but calling it Soul Eater or not is maybe the most... Well, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of the tip off. You know, I... Yeah. Mm, anyway. Uh, but yeah, because we've been talking about these posts, uh, over these uh, podcasts, a lot about uh, how the mech anime genre has been kind of crashing. This is maybe a good time to talk about the mech anime from this season. Oh, there was one quite good one. Knights of Sidonia. Oh. Yes. God, but, so I'm not sure I agree with you on that, because quite frankly, having read a bit of the Knights of Sidonia manga... Hmm. The fact that it got the reputation it did kind of blows my mind because it's a glorified harem. Yeah, but I think it's... I think I would... Knights of Sidonia, I think, is more worth bringing up because this was actually the show that Netflix licensed as... Mm. You know, we were so focused on Netflix as a licensor much more recently and a funder of stuff. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they helped fund Knights of Sidonia. And I think it did well for them. I think it did... Well... Although I do wonder because we didn't, there was such a gap between Knights of Sidonia and when you saw any subsequent hmm. attempt to leverage that kind of thing. They did get a sequel though. It did, but what came after that? It, you got a big gap yeah, between do, that I and guess. the next thing that Netflix So maybe it didn't. Define. Maybe I'm wrong then. So I don't know that it actually I did. I swear that I well. remember hearing it doing well at the time though for them. Yeah, but what does well look like? I don't know. That's the thing. Um, this was C- but this had a- was CG, was it not? Full CG. Unfortunately, it's it is... It's very clunky looking. It is. Unfortunately, this is one of those classic examples of an anime that... Because so like, I don't think Science of Sidonia is amazing, but I think some of the science fiction in it is genuinely fascinating and really, really interesting. Yes, but they also cram in all these really generic elements that I oh, think you- totally bog the thing down. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. And I right remember now. like watching and reading this and thinking... Wait, why does everyone rave about this? Because, yes, there are some interesting sci-fi aspects, but I think they're completely subsumed by the bland harem bullshit. Mm, Maybe the anime focus. I don't really remember. I didn't watch the second season, (laughs) despite really enjoying it. Oh, God, there was some really weird shit in that Sidonia uh, when you look at it. But, yeah, it was unfortunately one of these great examples of a series that uh, it was animated in full CG, and it was like, this is still good, but... The technology's not quite there. Technology's not there, but also like you, this. You look at it and you think this would, this is not improved by being CG at all. Yeah. Uh, like maybe if they just stuck to the battles being CG. Some of them are it's like some of the some of the things are like technically impressive, but you're looking and thinking like, because I know this isn't actually that much cheaper, or in often cases not cheaper at all than doing uh, animation or less work labor intensive. Yes. Um, it's it's just it's another one of those shows. It's one of the better ones, CG ones, but it's it, it partly because of what it covers. Like some of their alien designs that they do in CG are really interesting. But again, we have to wait for. We've brought up Land of the Lustrous a few times now. Interestingly, now that I'm thinking on it, Nice of Sidonia was one of the early manga that I was reading digitally. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. And I remember thinking, yeah, I, I stopped reading after a few volumes because I was like, you're not a fan. No. No. No, I think um, the crappier elements just but yes. totally ruined it for me. And it was a mech show. But then we had the, well, ironically, it being the best mech show because some of the other you ones. You know, I feel like saying it's the best is... is It's like, whoa, I'm the least smelly pile also, of shit. But it's not good and it's very pretentious. And I would even go so far as to say the fact that it's so far up its own butthole to me in some ways makes it worse than some of the other options this season and I know that's and saying I a lot I like Knights of Sidonia <laughs> and I know that's saying a lot well I was thinking more of our uh, our very low lights here of Dama Dollar and Dai Shogun so Dama Dollar is one of these like oh pervy jokes is about like there are penguins in it penguins that like have gi- with giant erections but it's one of those shows that like tries to be shocking and ends up just being it's very puerile. It's puerile, and it's like, okay, you're shocking, but you're also shit. 
these jokes are neither funny and I just it's like congratulations you made me think your jokes are stupid and puerile uh, I dropped down a dollar like halfway into the episode it is really really bad although if the, I'm not mistaken the mechs are somehow powered by the lead being horny which yes. ironically does so had, Shogun um, the mechs are powered by yeah, they're not supposed to be purely about them being horny but it really is just about them being horny. Uh, my other... The thing is, like, Diamond Dollar is shit, but what makes Dai Shogun more notable is the complete lack of animation. See, Dai it, Shogun is terrible, and I enjoyed its terribleness. Dai Shogun is terrible in every way. And, like, a... It's impressively bad. It's one of the worst anime of the decade. Just on a pure, like, on a technical level, it's just the complete vapidness of it. It's, like, trying to... It's, like... It's trying to be a goofy comedy that's not funny. See, I enjoy and it. It goes for the most lowbrow jokes. Like at least Diamond Dollar's lowbrow jokes are like inventive. <laughs> not very many I shows. I remember have... Diamond Dollar though in the first half episode involves Mala Station. Oh yes. And Dai Shogun wasn't good, but I don't remember Mala Station. It did have Mala pl- Station. Okay. Well, maybe I'm not remembering. Yes. Anyway. Look, at least in both cases, I don't think either one was halfway up their own butthole. And Captain mm. Earth totally Captain, was. so this is why I would dis... Captain Earth is like, hey guys, have you heard of Shakespeare? We're deep. That was the thing when you were going on about Knights of Estonia being... Uh, it's like, oh, I think this is worse because it's up its own butt. It's like, look, Knights of Estonia succeeds something. Captain Earth succeeds nothing while also being up its own birth. Mm. Captain Earth uh, is. Okay, so I will agree with the people though who point to like the launch sequence being pretty great. It is pretty good. That's the only good the thing. The rest about of it's garbage. Captain Earth is maybe one of the worst mech anime. Just completely up, beautifully animated, up its own ass, complete crap, and it's kind. Of, it's Bones trying to make Captain uh, Eureka Star- Seven happen again. Well, um, wasn't it also a lot of the people who worked on Star Driver? Oh, possibly. I'm pretty sure it had a lot of the same staff as Star Driver. And after this, Bones stopped trying to make mech anime. I mean. Pretty much everyone, it seems like, stopped trying to make mech anime. Yeah, but it's been kind of a this trend. This was exquisitely bad. Yeah, and it seems like it was just a massive, massive failure. And I know failure. a lot of people are very disappointed. Yeah. And I remember seeing people like, well, it's got to improve next episode, right? And it didn't. And yeah. it just said, like, had random Shakespeare crap crammed into it for no reason other than to look smart. Hmm. Um, you know, lots of people having what are supposed to be in-depth, you know, meaningful conversations, and it just means absolutely nothing. Um, yeah, Captain Earth was pretty fucking bad. I agree. Um, that's not to say Diamond Dollar or Die Shogun no. were good, but at least they weren't trying to convince me they were really smart and amazing. And that was the spring 2014 season. So what did we like? Oh, I liked Wee Cross. Yeah, you like Wee Cross. I love, I mean, there was Mashishi and there was Haikyuu. Yes. Sorry. Oh, Haikyuu is really good. It scrolled off our little. See? Yeah. See, there was good stuff this season. You yeah. know what? Maybe someday I'll go back and finish watching the Mishishi. Otome show with the exploding clothing. Maybe one day you'll actually... I'll, I will just sit down with you and say, here are the good episodes of Mishishi I think you'll like. I mean, I watched part of it. I used to own the DVDs. I own the DVDs. Okay. Oh, well, anyway... Well, and Remember, that, folks, most anime is garbage, but it's worth it for the few gems that are out there. Uh, have you got any choice for the ending? Do I? Uh, I mean, <gasps> do you want to play Snow Halation? Yes. <laughs> All right. I, I guess some Snow Halation. I was going to play Mushishi, but let's go. Since we were talking about Snow Halation, of course,